Hello, everyone, and welcome to Anchor Star Wealth Market Update. Mike and Steve here. We got three topics for you today. We're going to first of all talk about the, the rally in tech. Is it over? Every single time we run up for like, you know, two, three years, we have one to two day sell off and all the same people, you might even know their names, come on TV and declare that the tech rally is over. I will show you what's called a laughable article as to whether the te tech rally is over or not. Then we're going to transition to Mikey's and talk about airline stocks. My personal favorite, absolutely not. If you if you bring those over into our book, you're you're going to hear about it either to sell it on day one or day two or or day forever. Uh, but you know that's my opinion. Mike's going to offer his opinion, and he's going to relate that to why you don't necessarily always want to hold the you know the whole S and P 500 that you know buy the spy and go away. And then we'll conclude with when to short. You may think airline stocks, hmm, should I short that? You may think, I don't know, Bitcoin's at all-time highs. Should I short that? Is that? Should I short into tech? Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about shorting stocks, and uh, it takes a pretty significant amount of skill unless you just want to get burned. But before we get into that, this is a financial education presentation. You have to do your own due diligence for acting upon anything that you hear Mike and I talk about. Full disclaimer information is available at anchorstarwealth.com. We are going to start with, is the tech rally over? Uh, so we're going to take a look at tech stocks first and this you know is the tech rally over this is a cnbc uh article that i have here you know the the wall street analyst when you hear they you know and you know if you're an expert in your field you probably laugh when when somebody says like well they say and you're like well who's they well they is often in this world wall street analysts which is an ocean of people and i'm sure they're good they're they're great people but i would say on the I uh, might get some hate for this, but literally on the the chain of where you exist in the universe of finance, Wall Street analyst isn't the the highest paying job. Is, is what I'm saying. So I mean, it's but but they always have these opinions, right? And they go out and they say stuff like this, and this is what just cracks me up. So I'm like, okay, I wake up, I read an article, CNBC Pro, rallies over. Okay, yeah, let's see what they have to say. So then I get down here to this chart, and they're telling me. And I go, hey, NASDAQ stocks are going to be due for a sell-off. Okay, analysts, what you got? Give me something juicy. And they're like, Steve, money manager, actual money manager, not analyst, but actual like moves millions, crowd strike. I'm like, yeah, I like it. Ego stock, yeah. Mike likes it. Ego stock, yeah. Okay, there's a company. It's up 150% in 12 months. We are making the call. But it's going to go down 1%. Are you kidding me? That's your call. You wasted an article to tell me that CrowdStock might move down one one percent. Uh, it, it probably did today. Who? Oh yeah, rough call, right? It moves two to three percent a day. You know what? What kind? Of, that's not usable information. So it's like, okay, well, let's get into something aggressive. Okay, Broadcom could you know, go down twelve percent. Yeah, let's go stand in front of the boulder, the the AI chip bulldozer and say it's gonna go down 12%. Yeah, have fun standing there while that thing runs you over, right? Um, so, I mean, you could make a case, Netflix. I think Netflix has run up too much. I think the story has played out. I'm not a Netflix fan, and I'm wrong every day, it seems, on the, with my particular thesis, and I'm okay with that. But I mean, to tell me, hey, Steve, you just made 97% in the past 12 months. Let's unload that bad boy, because you could see a 7% downside. Whoa. I mean, just this is all nonsensical, but the my the the moved up 150%, you're gonna shave off one percent. It's like, oh come on. So let's finish with what is my actual point here. My point is tech stocks run up for a reason. They are, you know, it's services, it's software, it is subscription based, it is high margin kind of stuff. Uh it's new patches and new updates, and you have to buy new iPhones all the time, it seems, right? You gotta buy new equipment. There's so much margin built into tech that it's just a good place to have your money. Uh, Costco, great company, Walmart, you know, great companies. They just, I mean, there's only so much they can get out of their margins, but tech, tech stocks, every time they start to sell off, you get the same like 20 people to so go on CNBC, they get to be right one day a year and hop on there and talk about how the run up in tech is over. I say good luck, uh, again, don't get run over. So with that, let's go over to another favorite, of mine and that's airline stocks so over to you mike all right crowd strike crowd strike up 0.2 percent <laughs> missing the go. call but anyways um airlines 
And, and as I have kids that love to travel, they love talking about airlines. I asked my son, I said, hey, I want to take you away for a weekend. Where do you want to go? He told me Los Angeles. I said, why would you want to go to Los Angeles? <laughs> and he said, because we get to fly for a long time in the plane. And I said, that is not how we pick our vacations. <laughs> You know, whether you're on the plane for three hours or two, you know, it's about the same experience. So today, news, JetBlue, Spirit, and their merger. I have flown Spirit, maybe not JetBlue, but, you know, what is the impact on that stock? So since Spirit, let me bring this over, and it is a house of pain. So it is down <laughs> 11% today, but... Oh, you know, only down 11%. If you'd have bought it at its high at 70, it's down, you know, 90%. So this stock is uh, dangerously getting close to probably bankruptcy, but we'll see. Now the mergers have all been denied. Uh, you know, even JetBlue stock is actually up, probably happy because the shareholders, they're not going to go buy Spirit. So, uh, but once again, this stock is down a good 75% from only a couple years ago. So when it comes to airline stocks, you know, these are two of the smaller players and you might say, well, but what about, what about the great Delta? And I'm going to cover Delta United and American. So Delta, take a look at this stock, you know, and, and what I did is I put on the graph here, you can see how it compares against the actual S and P 500. So since 2009, you know, it's had Delta's actually had some moves prior to COVID, but overall trailing the S&P 500 by 50%. Um, and you're gonna see the other ones trail by even more. Uh, one of the quotes that I always remember was, uh, and I believe it was Warren Buffett said, hey, if you wanna become a millionaire in the airline business, you start off as a billionaire, you invest in the airlines and you will become a millionaire. So yep. that's, that's kind of where it goes. Um, let me continue, United, you know, and check out this one against the S&P 500. In the last, uh, you know, 14 years, it's up 12%. The S&P is up 168%. And then finally, we'll go to American. And we're seeing the same kind of story. American's down 38%. The S&P is at 179 since 2014. So when it comes to the airline stocks, and this is, in, this is not in any of our models, the airline stocks, you know, the model, what I've seen is they are typically a commodity. Uh, when I shop where I'm going to fly to, I look at, you know, three, four, five different airlines. I see which one's the least expensive that kind of fits on the schedule that I want to fly. And that's how I pick it. Um, when you're dealing with commodities, you have to compete on price and the airlines do. What we've seen in the past is a lot of times they'll go bankrupt, wipe out all their debt, wipe out the shareholders. Then they come back. Uh, re-emerge and they put their fares on sale, forcing all the other airlines to match their fares. So they kind of take those turns. So kind of the recommendation I have is, you know, airlines, we love to fly, but we definitely do not want to buy. So I'll turn oh, that over nice. to Steve. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Mike. You can go ahead and bring that down. Uh, you know, my some of my airline stock stories are, you know, I have a lot of pilot friends, right? That, uh, you know, they want to, uh, you know, they're in they're in the book and they start to invest and it's like yeah we're not going to do any investing in airlines um you can just unshare your screen there the um the you know one guy even had his airline stocks he's like i still have united and i'm like well you don't have united you have the old united that went bankrupt at the, the you know when you go bankrupt you stocks go to zero you reissue new stock new qsips and all that so he still thought he had a chance and he's like i understand why my united stock's not going up well it's not not the same stock right so it's just kind of crazy. I would say cruise liners are in there as well. Um, you know, get in on the transaction game, right? If you're going to do this, and I'm not a huge big fan in the travel and leisure space, but, you know, Airbnb, you know, the, the big transaction side of stuff but it is not a bad way to play it. But last thing I want to talk about today is shorting a stock. And you're like, okay, Steve, I hear you, but, you know, tech does sell off sometimes and it sells off hard. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Um, so is there a time when you would short tech? And I'm like, not really. And here's why. If I'm going to short, and I did some shorting for a while, and it was when I was day trading, but that's so day trading by definition, I'm shorting at the beginning of the day and I'm flat by the end of the day. I'm not holding anything overnight. Um, it, you know, that, so that's that's really not investing, right? Um, 
if you're trying to use it as an investor, you probably want to do it around an event, the election, earnings, you know, an announcement, uh, developers conference. You know, there needs to be kind of a trigger event that you think somehow magically, because you can't have inside information that'd be legal. Um, but you think you have in your brain that it's going to go down off of that. You could short, but if you're holding a short overnight, you can lose all your money. So, you know, back to the uh, basics. I'll show AMC first. Um, you know, if if you invest in AMC stock, you know, on May 23rd of 2021, we'll pick that day. Uh, and you say, okay, um, I think it's a long-term buy. I want to invest in the company because movie theaters are making a huge comeback out of COVID. Like, okay, sure, Netflix, whatever. Um, uh, that's what you think. I think that's the future. Uh, and you put money in, well, you put say a thousand dollars in it. The most you can lose is a thousand, right? You're, you know, you're, and you're wrong. And you're, you know, you turned your thousand dollars into you know, uh, 90, no, sorry, $4, uh, you know, you know or you're, you're, however the math works, right? You're over 90% loss. If you short, you can be right, but you got to be right on a time frame because otherwise you can be destroyed. So if you short with $1,000 on May 23rd and the stock starts going against you, if it goes from 65, you can see the price off the right. If it goes up to 130, you're already down $1,000. Um, if it goes up to oof, whatever, three times that, one is at 185, um, 195, excuse me, then you're down 200%. I mean, you can lose way more than you invested. It, it's insane. And imagine, so that person at $65 on May 23rd, who says, I want to short theaters because I think this is the stupidest thing ever. It's like, look, the chart, you're right. I agree with you. But that does not mean it's not going to shoot to the moon between the time you short it and the time you get to say, I'm right. And if it does, you can be financially destroyed. Um, and that's, so what happens if there's a bunch of people short here and the stock starts moving up? They have to cover that short, which when you cover a short, you have to buy the stock back that you borrowed. And if you're if a bunch of people all of a sudden have to buy the stock, that increases the price, meaning more shorts are in trouble. So when you see something and there was a headline, uh, gosh, I think this was the the Hello Kitty days, if uh, you know, in GameStop and all that, of if you see like a hundred percent short interest, stay stay out of there. You think, well, on Reddit, you may think you're a genius, but that means like everybody's short. But the problem is if everybody's short and then it starts to, and it should be illegal from to be more than 100% short, by the way, but it's not. Um, if the stock starts going against you, I mean, it's going to run up and do something like this, where it ran up five, you know, 600%, which is crazy. So in shorting, you can be right, but if you're wrong and over the long term, then you, you're you going to get knocked out of the game, which is very different. And we'll show Bitcoin here. And while I get this chart set up and get ready to make my point, Mike has a, a reveal. Uh, here, let me take this down for just a second so you can see it. The, uh, the where is it? Here we go. The, you ready? Uh, nope, because I'm in switch air day. All right. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, well, I just want to say, you know, since last week I mentioned Bitcoin swag, and I said I, I said to myself, I'm only going to wear it when Bitcoin is really, really up. And Bitcoin right now is up 7.9%. So we will have the reveal of <laughs> Bitcoin swag right here. So we got some Bitcoin swag on showing our support. And, and my theory is once everybody buys the T-shirt, maybe it will be time to short. I don't know. But anyways. No, you make a good point. Uh, you know, when Mike's wearing the T-shirt, that's one thing. Please make fun of him in the comments. Um, but when your, your Uber driver is making fun, of, you know, wearing the T-shirt or the people you're meeting at the uh, the grocery store telling you about telling you about that, uh, then, then definitely want to be uh, concerned there. But let me share out the uh, the. The bit, or yeah, the BITB for today, and talk about the difference between shorting and investing. Um, I'm not sure my chart showed up there for uh, AMC, but but you know what I'm talking about. So in here, so we bought back in on BITB, we invested and we said Bitcoin, right? Then we invested some money here on this first day, and it opened up like at $25 a share, and it started moving against us. But the the long term part of that investing is you can be wrong for a long time as long as you're eventually right. Um, and then you can make a whole bunch of money. Again, in the short time frame, if you're shorting, 
if it starts moving against you, you got to get out of it because you can lose more, lose more than you invested. So anyway, we were in at 25, it dripped down to 21. Yeah, that's what, I don't know, 16% uh, quick math off of where I bought it in the course of like 10 days and it moved down almost every day. Was my phone ringing off the hook? Not really, but I could feel it, right? You know, I could I could feel the angst of starting in a few little snide comments. So I'm like, just hold, hold on, hold on. We told we've been waiting for this trigger event. We just need to let it play out. Well, all that selling was basically the fast money who had who had bought into Bitcoin for the big rise to the ETF release is now selling out. So it's just going somewhere else. And then the thesis can kind of take back over. So you kind of see that. Uh, but you can see obviously it's run up straight, you know, straight up since then from 25 up to 36. If you're with us and you have BITB in your book, even if you bought it an hour ago, you are up right so across the board so anyhow that's kind of the difference that i want to do uh to talk to you real quick to kind of hit the home uh, since i know i didn't have this up earlier having a bad tech day anyhow here's where i was talking about the uh with amc and if you if you shorted it there you were back out and lost a ton of money even though you were right so anyhow that's why we don't short all right i'm gonna stop sharing there get bring my tech a game tomorrow so i don't mess up the slides so much uh but we'll be back with you guys tomorrow and we'll see you next time bye